Welcome to C Programming Tutorials. This is a production of YouTube channel Learnorama and the Facebook page Awesome C Programming Tutorials in High Dev. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, I would highly recommend that you do so, so that you can be notified of any new tutorials that I post. And I would also appreciate if you could become the fan of the Facebook page as well. Okay, in today's tutorial, we are going to learn about pointers to structures. Basically, uh, I had I had talked about pointers before uh, about structures before, but I did not talk about structure pointers because at that time we had not talked about pointers at all. So now we are going to talk about pointers because uh, structure pointers because we have already learned about uh, pointers. But before we start, uh, if you be if you haven't watched the structures uh, tutorial, I would suggest that you do so. I I'm sure the link to to the to the to the tutorial is on the screen right now. Um, just click on it and it will take you there. So let's get started. So we had learned before uh, in the previous tutorial that this is how you actually declare or define a particular structure. That you write the keyword struct followed by the name of the structure and then um, you define the variables that this structure is going to have like this and that's it. And at that point, uh, you're, and th this can be more than one variables here. And, and followed by the semicolon and that basically declares the but that particular structure that you are trying to declare. Now, now my phone is ringing. I'm sorry. Okay, so <coughs> so let's uh, now. One thing to note is that this actually defines how the structure looks like. Okay, it doesn't end up in actually creating any variables. Not even the variables inside it. Okay, so let's let's take an example. So let's say if we want to represent a rectangle in in our program okay so you have to you have to collect data about rectangles for example so you want to represent rectangles in your program how are you gonna do that the way to do to represent something is basically re represent the information the basic information about or that is associated with that particular thing and then for a rectangle we know that every rectangle has this characteristic of length and width right so you have a length and you have a width and and at that point so um so with these two values if you specify these two values for for any rectangle that actually uniquely identifies that particular uh rectangle so let's let's do that so what are we going to do we are going to create a structure called rectangle of course and then inside it we will have length and we will have width and what would be the type of length and width well in general it could be of uh, any real number like it could be 2.5 centimeters by 3 centimeters or 6.5 centimeters by 3.946 centimeters so in general the type would be float but you know just to keep things simpler let's call it integer okay so let's let's say the length and width are going to be int so these two uh, attributes or properties or parameters of rectangle actually determine a particular you know rectangle if i if i give you length and width you can draw that rectangle right because we already know that every what what the other things are like rectangle has four sides the opposite sides are parallel the angle between them is you know be between the sides is all 90 degrees and all this so th all this is standard it doesn't change from rectangle to rectangle the only thing that changes from rectangle to like rectangle is of course length and width so <coughs> let's see so now the thing to note again as I said this only defines the rectangle it doesn't declare any variable length so it doesn't actually allocate any l variable length in in the memory it doesn't allocate any variable width in the memory until I declare a variable of this type a struct rectangle so all it does is it's kind of it, it represents the type a new type that we just declared okay now if I have to define a rectangle say rect1 so this is what I do struct rectangle rect1 okay and if I have to access the members of this rectangle how do I do that rect1 dot length now see how editor is helping me 
in trying to figure out what the what could it be see it as soon as I press dot it basically gives me both of the members in defined in this rectangle length and width right there so I could choose one of those okay S or if I start writing one of those it will basically narrow it down to whatever is left and in this case only one is left and then if I press enter it will automatically fill it up so you know editor is helping you write the member members here so that's a good thing about the editor so suppose it's like 10 centimeters so we say rect one dot length is equal to 10 centimeters and the width is same I don't know five centimeters so we say rect one dot width is equal to five centimeters so so this is it at this point we have a rectangle variable rect one and it has two member elements length and width and if I try to actually if I try to show you how it's gonna look like in the memory so it's gonna be something like this rect one okay and then we have two members in it one is called length the other one is called width right and when I assigned length equal to 10 it basically stores 10 in here and width equal to 5 it stores 5 in here okay this is what it looks like at this point now suppose what I do is instead of defining the the excuse me a variable rect1 or of type rectangle in addition to do, doing that let me define a pointer p rect okay and how how did we say how we are going to represent or visualize a pointer in in our mind by making a square and an arrow coming out of it right and at this point just by declaring a pointer it can be pointing to anywhere so it's always a good idea to actually make pointer equal to zero that way it is pointing to kind of nowhere okay so and that kind of pointer is called null pointer and it is represented usually by m putting us across across the across the square okay that shows a null pointer now let's see if we can make it point to this rect rect one variable that we have here okay so let's see how would we do that every pointer needs an address okay and how are we gonna get the address of rect1 very simple we use the ampersand operator and that basically gives you the address of this uh, of this variable rect1 so this is how we assign p rect or make p rect point to rect1 so after this statement executes p rect actually becomes it's not null anymore and it starts pointing to it starts pointing to rect1 or the start of rect1 now if I have to access the elements of rect1 using this pointer p rect how am I gonna do that I use this kind of an arrow and see how it automatically helps me again and I change the value of length to 6 so see if the if you are ta if you have the structure itself like this rect one not the pointer just the structure itself you use dot to access its member elements like length and width but if you have a pointer to a structure you use this dash and greater than sign together to access the its member elements so you can never ever do this p rect dot length this is not allowed okay this is going to give you an error okay because p rect is a pointer so this is like an arrow which is like pointing to length right so you will have to do something like this and if I have to delete it and access the width then I can do that so at this point the value of length and width in rect 1 will change to 6 and 7 okay and if I print using these value this uh, using rect 1 dot length it will print 6 because p rect actually changed it i'll conclude this tutorial at this point i hope you understand it keep watching the tutorials thank you so much